Namaste and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be continuing what we're doing with Kubernetes. Now, so far I haven't told you anything about Kubernetes other than this section is about Kubernetes. And I want you to trust me that I'll, I'll build up and show you why we would want to use something like Kubernetes. But I still haven't told you what Kubernetes is because I want to sort of show you the sort of problems you would run into. And then you need a solution and then why, why Kubernetes might be something that could help you. All right. So we have created several services um, through them. We have a counter, which is sort of like a producer. It's just generating numbers, random numbers. We have a server, which you can think of it as the place where we send our, um, which accepts these, um, the number that was produced and it stores it persist it to a Redis database is how my implementation did, implementation did it, but you could have used anything to persist your information. And then it serves that information up to any client who would like to consume it. And for a consumer, we're using a polar, which is another service that keep randomly trying to ask like, hey, what number do you have persisted or, some, or the last number you've persisted? And so those are our three services. And we can start them, we've run them and they work. So Today, we're going to Dockerize our services. Now, I don't know if Dockerize is a word or not. I don't know if I've encountered it somewhere else. So if you've heard it somewhere else, then I'm just reusing something that somebody has said. If you haven't heard it before, then fine. We'll just go with Dockerize. I don't know if it's a real word or not, but all it needs to be a word is for us to agree and understand what it means. And for us, it simply means taking our application and putting them in a Docker image so that we can create containers out of them. Now, if any of this sounds strange, you really need to check out my section 25 in which I go through what is Docker, I show why you might need to use Docker, I show how to build images and running containers and destroying containers and all that good stuff about Docker. All right, now um, I've been mentioning, um, you know, supporting the channel in a number of ways if you can. Um, so. First thing I ask you to do is just hit the subscribe button. That alone shows that oh, you really believe in the content and you want to be notified when I post new videos. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. Um, the other thing I said is try and engage. Let me know what you think about the material. And so thank you for those people who comment and thumbs up, taking the time to do that. Really appreciate that too. Um, it's also it's not only feedback for me, but it also actually helps the channel grow because of how YouTube works. I can't, I don't make the rules, but that's how it is. Engagement. All right. Another thing I said is that at the end of my video, I generally show um, Patreon as a, you know, one option for supporting the channel. And apparently um, my Patreon page doesn't work. So if you are one of those people who try to access the Patreon page and it didn't work for you, sorry about that. I'll do a better job of trying to maintain that stuff. Now, for other YouTubers, uh, they tend to generally give away something extra on the Patreon page, like they show you an extended video or behind the scenes. I sort of don't have any of that. I'm standing here or sitting here, editing the videos, planning it out, and recording it. So it's not very exciting. Um, but I'll try and think of something that I might be able to do for those people who go the extra mile and are able to support me on Patreon. I'll figure out something. At uh, one time I was thinking about maybe having like a QA and that sort of thing. And that's probably still something that I can do, um, but we'll see. So um, unfortunately I can't think of, of anything that I can promise right now, but again, this material is free. It's available only if you can support it, then worry about doing the Patreon thing or any of the other number of ways that you're going to see at the end of this video. All right. With that said, let's jump into today's material. In terms of Dockerizing our services, I'll do it in two parts. And at the end of this video, you'll see why we need like a second part to clean up some things. But that doesn't matter. Um, we're making progress. So let's start with where we left off. And so what I'll do is I'll copy our code from before. And so what we had was, you know, a many services. And in the last video, I mistakenly um, called this um, part um, section two, um, episode 26.02. It was still episode one of section 26 and part two of that. 
So today we're actually ready to do um, episode two. Yeah, this gets way too confusing. So let's do this. This is now section 26, episode two, that Docker Rising. All right. So this one called Docker Rising. Okay. And this is part one, because like I said, this is going to be in two parts. And ideally, the previous video should have been called like, this is part two when we wrote some code, um, because in part one, we did not write any code. So um, that is not properly named, but whatever, that's fine. Um, actually, I might actually put this as something like, um, if I were to name this properly, well, not properly, I don't know if that's proper, but maybe something like this. So yeah, probably that's the better way to name it. So part one of, Episode two of section 26, if you read it backward. All right, so what are we doing in terms of Dockerizing our stuff? Well, let's go into our directory here. And of course we have our code. And if I do this, we'll see that's all our Go code and everything. And so I'll start my Visual Studio Code editor in this directory. Here we are. And in terms of running things as container first you need an image and so if you remember one of the things that we were able to run uh, in a container was reddit itself so we did like go um not go docker run and oh i need to have my docker running i do not have it running so let me start it up okay so now docker is up and running let's verify so docker ps minus a okay so that's fine and so the last thing that we run as a Docker container was actually our Redis um, server. So I can totally just run that. And again, we should see that oh, that's running. It's been up um, three seconds. Um, so we created a container from a Docker image and the image was called Redis. So in order for us to run our applications as um, containers, we need to put them, build images for them. And the way we do that, and again, I'm not going to explain all that stuff because I went through it before. So what we need to do, let's start with our counter first as the one that we will, you know, dockerize. And so here's the code for this. Uh, it's very simple. So let's go here. And in this directory, I'll create a file called docker file. So we need to, so for our Docker file, the first thing we need to do is see which image or where are we gonna start, which image we're gonna customize, which is called our base image. So our base image is going to be Alpine. Now, why am I gonna use Alpine? Alpine is a Linux image that is really small. It's like five megabytes or something. And it's great for running applications like Go application because our Go application is statically linked, which means that oh, it has no dependencies. And so we can put it in something like an Alpha image, which um, doesn't have any libraries and all that sort of stuff, um, unlike let's say Ubuntu, which might be a much larger image. So in terms of creating images and containers, using Alpine with Go is like a match made in heaven, okay? It's perfect. So we use Alpine as our base image and what we want to do is we want to copy our executable, our counter executable into this image. So let's build it first. So if we do go build, we know that that's going to build us an executable. So let's clean up. It's going to build us an executable, but it's going to be for the wrong um, operating system. When it builds on this system, it's because I'm on Mac, it's building for Mac. But I need this to be, if I copy this into our image, I'll have a Mac executable in our Linux image and it's, that's not gonna work. So I need to do go OS and say, the OS is equal to Linux and Linux. And if I do go build now, and then I do file, you can see it's a Linux executable and this is great. So now that we have an executable, let's do copy is one of the commands we can use. And we can say copy counter and we want to copy it to you. And it doesn't matter which directory we put it in really, I'm just gonna put it in app counter. That's what I'm gonna use, but it doesn't really have to be there. It could be essentially anywhere else. 
All right. So with that in, in place, I think um, we're pretty much um, set in terms of now, if we were to run the build command, we know the base image and the first customization we're going to make on for that image is copying a binary to it. Well, that's not all we need to do. We also need to um, set some configuration for our executable. So if you remember that when our counter application starts, what we need to do is let's just look at the code here. You'll see that one of the things it does is it reads from the environment. You know, it looks for API URL, which is where should it be sending those counter values. Now notice it's not a parameter to our main application, so we can't pass it on the command line. It's reading it from the environment. So for that reason, what we have to do is set an environment variable, and you can see the way you set an environment variable in a Docker um, image is you simply say env, and then you have the key and value. So the key for us is API URL. And we want to be able to say, where should it send the values? Well, we have a decision to make here. By default, if we don't set this, it uses local host, right? It tries to write to local host. That is great when we're running the applications on our laptop, the all on our, our local host. But remember, these are gonna be in a container. So within that container, local host, this is the application that's gonna be running the counter. The server is not gonna be in that same container. That's going to be in a different um, container and each environment act like its own local host. So we need to agree on where to send it. So for now, we're going to say that when we run our server, because we're going to expose the port of our server on, to, to, on, on our local machine, we can say that our, the um, endpoint that our counter must reach is a server that's running on our local machine. Even though our server is gonna be running in a container, remember that's the benefit of Docker. Just like how we're running our Redis server in a container, we can still expose that port onto our local machine. So we'll do the exact same thing with our um, server. And so I know the IP address of my machine. So I'm on a Mac, if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine, you can do ifconfig and you can run this command and it lists all the IP addresses that are being used on your computer, all the network interfaces. Um, for me, I use the 10.10 .10, um, IP address range. So if I do that, I can see that I, my laptop is 10.10 at 10 100 or 158. Now, if you are on Windows, you should be able to use run IF config also actually. So that might work for you. Or it might be IP config, I can't remember. All right, so 10.10 at 10 100 or 158. And then colon port 80, let's say it's port 80. And of course, you know, that endpoint is going to be counter. And again, if you look here, you can see this is the default URL, if um, API URL. And so it has to look something like this. Of course, it can be local host. All right. So now we have that. So when our counter starts, the environment is going to have this variable, environment variable set. So that's good. How do we make sure that when we create a container from this image that we're gonna build that it actually starts this application. Well, this is the entry point. And so there are no more ways, there are basically two ways you can say which application should be run when um, a container is created. And so entry point is one of those commands, Docker commands that can be used when building an image. And so for us, it's gonna be this application. This is the thing that the binary that we copied from our local computer into the container. And so you can look at these um, help for these commands. So you see copy files or folder from source to destination. And it gives you an example there. Okay, you could of course go check the online documentation by clicking there. So that's essentially it. That's all we need to dockerize our container. So let's see if this works. So how do we then build a container? So let me clean up. So I'm going to use the, doc, the command docker build and then minus tag diversity using KTS for Kubernetes and counter two because we are in episode two for this section. Well, you can name it whatever you want. And then dot means to use the docker file in this directory. So usually that's the path where you can find the docker file. 
And so if I run this, and it's going to write that image out. And so if I do run the command docker image, and then I do list, it'll list all the images on my system, but I don't want that. So I'll type grep counter to see this image that I just built. And you can see I just built this image. It says two minutes ago or whatever. All right. So now that we know we have a, an image, we can create counters from it. So let's clean up. And so let's create a, con a container, not counter, a container. So docker run. And what I want to do minus daemons to run it in the background, essentially. And I still want to do this traversity. And of course, I have to give it the counter, the image I, I, I want to run. Counter dash zero two. And that should be it. If I run this command, yep. Um, let's do docker ps minus a now. And we should see that, yep, um, my counter is running. Now, how do we know if this is running successfully or didn't die or something? I mean, of course, if it died, we could rerun this. We'll see that oh, it, if it's dead. So it's definitely up and running. So, But how can we see what it's actually doing? We can say Docker because it's in a container. We can't really see what's going on there. We can do Docker logs minus F for follow. And then we give the image name or ID. And if we look, we can see that the log messages that are being written out by our container um, we can see those. And of course, this is um, going to have a problem posting because we do not have a server running there yet. So it's it's failing to post. Now, the other thing that we see is it says that I'm unable to post count um, because parsing this HTTP that a So for now, I'm going to leave this and ignore that error until we have our counter run, our server running. All right. So for our server, um, well, actually, the one that is easiest to do that's most similar to our counter is the polar. So I'll copy this file and I'll actually go work on the polar. And let's just go paste it because it's pretty much identical. And I'm just going to change this from counter to polar. So there, I'm going to say polar. And then the entry point is going to be polar. Now, the API endpoint has to be the same place, right? Which is, where do I get the count value from? So, so that didn't change. And so the only thing I need to do now is I'm going to stop this. Now, our application is still running. Not because I stopped looking at the log. It stopped. That's still up and running. So I'll go to our polar directory. And I'm going to do go OS build this polar and then i'm going to do the same thing docker build and this time this is going to be our polar and hopefully we should see the same thing and so creates and export the image and now we can do the same thing docker run and then if i do this and i say polar it should start running our polar too and so if i do docker ps minus a or even Docker, just Docker PS. Now I need to do minus A. But a minus A is in case anything died, we would have seen it. But that our pull is also up and running. And if we do Docker logs minus F to follow the logs there, we'll see it how, yep, our um, puller also cannot read from this location, which is fine. We don't have anything running there. Now, what we do have is our producer running, which is the counter, or consumer, the puller. And we have our Redis database. The only thing missing is our server. So let's go to the server directory and let's do go OS and let's build our server. We know we'll need that. All right, so that's built. So let's close this and we'll use this as inspiration. So let's copy this and we'll cut paste it to our server. So for our server, well, we have to change a few things. So we know that oh, this is going to be the server. The entry point is the server. OK, that's fine. In terms of API URL, well, let's look at our server code to see exactly what it expects. So for the server, it expects two things, listen address and the Redis URL. Well, we know for the Redis URL, it's not on local host. This is running on the same port 6379, which we exported to our computer, 
And we know this because we have Docker PS to show that our Redis server is available on our local machine, as you can see it's. So what we need to do is set a Redis URL, this environmental variable, to our laptop IP address, to my laptop IP address and this port. So for that reason, let me just close all these other guys out I don't need. So for the server, I need a, let me call this Redis URL. And it's going to be not HTTP because it's just Redis. And the port number is 6379, I believe. 6379. And so let me go back to look at the code here and see 6379. And so yeah, that's where we want our Redis server to, our server to connect to is the Redis server that's running our laptop. Okay, so that part is good. Um, in terms of listen URL, or listen address, I think it's called. Listen address. In terms of our listen address, where do we want to listen on? Well, our server is running in a container, so it cannot be listening on trying to open up a port because remember this listen address is what we're telling our um, server to open a port on by calling HTTP that listening or go. So we cannot tell it open a socket or create a socket or bind to something on another machine. It has to be where it's running. So this is going to be one of the interfaces where it's running. And so what we can do is we can either say local host or we can say, just take this out. So now our server is running in a container and it's opening a port in that container. So how do we access it? Well, the exact same thing as Redis. Redis is opening this port within the container, but Docker allows us to say, oh, map the port that's running inside that Redis container to a port that's running outside. And so that is what we're going to do. So we're going to, the way this works is that when you build the container, you have to say, I want to export that those ports. So we want to export, expose port 8080, because that's what our server is going to open up in that container so we have to be able to expose it allowing docker to map to it or link it on our local machine so now let's go ahead and build our server again just like all the others notice how repetitive this is we're going to build our server now that that's built let's clean up let's now run our server but this time remember if we run our server or we do not map that port, we don't have access to it. So for example, if we were to do Docker run and we were simply to do something like this server, that would work, right? Then and we do Docker PS, we'll see that our server is running. Where is that server? Oh, um, let's do minus A. Look at our server died. Oh, it says exited. Um, so why did it exit? Uh, let's go here and see. So Docker logs and we don't need to follow because it's dead. Okay, unable to start server listening on lookup colon, no such host. Huh. Why? Um, it's not I address. Let's see. I am going to try something. I think this might be the reason with and Docker is so funny, this YAML file. So let me do this. So we say env listen address equals the colon and notice what I did was I took out the quotes around it and I took out the space in between it. Now this is certainly has a space around it and it didn't seem to complain with the other ones. So, but let's see, um, cause it's find it really weird why it says no such host. Um, so let's build again to put 8080 in the container. And now if we run this and now when we do PS minus a, we should see that oh yes, port 88 in the container is map in the container is mapped to our local machine or our local machine port 88 points to port 88 in the container. And now if we actually follow the log for this container, the server, well, it just sits there and it's waiting. Okay. Let's see what's going on with our, let's say counter. Now that we have a server, it should be sending stuff to it. So Docker logs, minus F and it still is not working. 
it is having problem connecting to 110-100 counter. Let's see, force, force path segment in URL cannot contain colon. I'm thinking that all, all of these are having an issue with the value when it is in quotes. So I'll do this instead and remove it. So let me go back and to the counter. I'll make these like this. And I don't know why. Uh, maybe there's a Docker files are YAML files. So maybe it's a YAML thing. Um, I don't know. That's just weird. And so I'll take this off and I'll rebuild all our containers. And so control C and I'll do Docker PS minus A and I'll do Docker RM. Let me just clean up these containers. Remove force because I don't, I have to stop them and then remove them, but I'll do it this way, which will force them to stop and then remove them. Um, and then do this. So that removes all those containers. Docker PS, we only have the Redis one running. Okay, so clean up. So I'll do Docker build and let's build our server again. Then I'll CD into our polar, for example, do Docker build and then make sure it's our polar that we build it. Then I'll CD into our counter. And then do a Docker build, make sure that's always a conqueror we're building. So now we have new updated containers. Now I can do Docker run and then run all these different containers. So here's our server. Uh, here is, let's see. Let's run Docker run. And then here is our polar Docker run. And then let's do a counter. And then here's a counter. All right, so all these should be running now. PS minus A, nothing should have died. And it didn't look like anything died. So now we do Docker logs minus F. And if we look at one of these, let's see what it's saying now. And oh, yep, it seems to be working now. So the issue was how those the URL was specified, something to do with Docker, didn't like it, those value being in quote. So I think maybe it was the equal, we needed to put it really close together like that. So anyway, so that looks like the counter is posting a value. It is not having an issue. And from our, let's look at the polar, the consumer. So Docker logs minus F and there we go our counter is getting a value from the server. So we don't have to check the server because what we know is that in order for our counter to get a value, the server must be persisting it because the server reads a value from storage, which is Redis, and sends it. All right, so that's working, so that's great. All right, so I'll hand it here, and the reason why is because this video is already long. But as you can see, to get our services running, you know, we have four containers that we need to run and we have to start them by hand and so that's just management that we don't need to do wouldn't it be nice to just run one command and have all these containers um, you know start to come up and so that's what we're going to do in part two of the horizon or containers we'll see how we can help manage these and spoiler alert we're going to use um, docker compose um, file to start these set of sources together. So hopefully that all that worked for you. If you had some issue, please let me know what issues you encounter. And then maybe I can see if I can give you some pointers to help resolve it. Um, like I mentioned before, here are some ways you can help support the channel. If you're able to, if you're not required to, this is all free material. But if you can, here are some ways you can support the channel with digital currencies or using the Patreon page, which I should have fixed by the time you see this video. Okay, take care, stay safe, see you in the next video. Bye.